we're going to look at one of the experiments that Michael Faraday performed around 1837 that led to his development of the concepts of electric flux and the electric field. He constructed this apparatus of, of nested spheres. So these were conducting spheres that he could charge and he could place the smaller sphere inside the larger sphere. Let's first understand what happens if we place some charges on a conductor. So we have this conducting sphere and if I were able to put some charges in the middle of the sphere like this, we know that there's a columbic repulsion between the electrons and because we're in a metal, these electrons will move away from each other and they will move away until they get to the surface of the sphere. Okay, when they get to the surface of the sphere, there's a barrier to the vacuum called the metal work function. We won't talk about the metal work function today, but the electrons, once they get to the surface, can't get further apart. In addition, in a static situation, the electric fields will be normal everywhere to the surface. Otherwise, if you had a tangential component to the electric field, then the electrons would move along the surface of the metal. Also at this point, there is no electric field inside the sphere, otherwise you would not have a static situation. You would have movement of the electrons inside the sphere. Now let's assume we have a hollow sphere, and again we placed electrons inside. Again, we would have a columbic repulsion, and these electrons would move away from each other. And they would move until they got to the surface of the sphere again. Again, we would have no electric fields inside this spherical shell because it's conducting, and in a static situation, then we cannot have an electric field, otherwise we would have charge movement and the electric field on the surface is everywhere normal to the surface. And it doesn't matter how thin we make this shell, the same thing would happen. If you could put charges on the inside surface of this thin metal shell, the electrons, because of the columbic repulsion, would move away until they got to the surface of the sphere. Now let's look at the experiment that Michael Faraday performed. He took his inner sphere and placed some known charge on it, and let's say that charge is plus Q. Then he took his outer sphere, being careful to make sure there was no net charge on it, clamped it around this inner sphere. He then grounded the outer sphere, then removed the ground, removed the outer sphere and measured the amount of charge on it. And what he found was that the outer charge, the, the charge on the outer sphere was minus Q. So this led him to the development of the concept of electric flux and the electric field. He referred to it as a displacement flux and said flowing from this plus Q was a displacement flux of plus Q and this displacement flux displaced a charge of plus Q off the outer sphere. So psi is the symbol we're going to use for this displacement flux or electric flux. And let's take a closer look at exactly what is happening. Here I'm indicating a positive charge on the inner sphere and the electric flux with spherical symmetry flowing from that positive charge. Now Faraday clamped an uncharged sphere around the inner sphere. So the electrons 
in the outer sphere will be attracted by these positive charges, but because there's a barrier between the metal and the vacuum, those electrons will have to stop and reside on the inner surface of the outer sphere. Now the inside of the outer sphere has to be neutral. There can be no electric field in there, otherwise we would not have a static situation. And so positive charges will have to reside on the outer surface of the outer sphere so that we have a net charge of zero on that outer sphere. Now let's zoom in and see exactly what's happening in this region right here. Here is that outer sphere and the circles with positives are indicating the location of the atoms. And here are the conduction electrons. So to the right here is the inner sphere with the positive charge which is going to attract electrons. So that will result in this negative charge on the outer surf on the inner surface of the outer sphere and this shift of electrons results in a positive charge on the outer surface of the outer sphere and a neutral region in between now let's think about what happens if we add a ground here now we have a source of electrons. These electrons can flow up and cover up these charges on the outer wall of our outer cylinder. And so when we remove the ground, we have this situation, a plus Q on the inner sphere and a minus Q on the inner wall of the outer sphere. So when Faraday unclamped this outer sphere and measured the charge on it, he obtained minus Q. So Faraday's displacement flux or electric flux flows from positive charges and terminates on negative charges. And for every one coulomb of positive charge, you have one coulomb of this displacement flux or electric flux flowing from it. And for every minus one coulomb of charge, you have minus one coulomb of electric flux terminating on that minus one coulomb of negative charge. Let's take a sphere of radius A and place Q coulombs of charge on it. Emanating from this sphere then will be Q coulombs of displacement flux or electric flux which we use the symbol psi to represent. Now let's construct a spherical surface around this inner sphere with radius A plus and by that I mean a spherical surface that's just slightly greater than this sphere here so that it contains inside it all this positive charge so that there's Q coulombs of electric flux flowing through the surface of this spherical surface of radius A plus. So the density of the electric flux on this spherical surface of radius A plus is psi over 4 pi A squared or Q over 4 pi a squared. And we give this charge density a symbol d, this flux density a symbol d. d is the electric flux density field. It is a vector field and because of the spherical symmetry here then we can write D as Q over 4 pi A squared in the A sub R direction. Now, if we think of just any arbitrary sphere then of radius R, where R is greater than A, then the electric flux density field we can write as D is equal to Q 
over 4 pi r squared in the a sub r direction for r greater than a, the radius of the inner sphere. Now, if we reduce the, this sphere to, from a radius of a to a point charge of charge q, then the electric flux density field for point charge q is q over 4 pi r squared in the a sub r direction. Now earlier we saw that the electric field for point charge was q over 4 pi epsilon sub 0 r squared in the a sub r direction. So we see that the electric flux density field is equal to the permittivity of free space times the electric field intensity for a point charge in free space. Looking back at the electric flux density on the surface, at the surface of our sphere, we see we have a, the charge on the sphere divided by the total surface area of the sphere. Well, that's just the surface charge density rho sub s. So the electric flux density at the surface of a conductor in a static situation is just the surface charge density and it is in a direction that's normal to the surface which we've already argued because if we had a tangential component there would be a charge movement on the surface of our conductor. If we go back to Coulomb's law we saw that the constant in Coulomb's law we wrote as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0. We can now see why we write this constant in this form. So if we think of Q sub t as a, a test charge and this capital Q as a charge at the origin then the force on this test charge wherever we put it in space then due to this point charge Q at the origin is the electric field due to the point charge Q and is given as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0 Q over R squared in the A sub R direction. We just found that the electric flux density emanating from that point charge Q at the origin is Q over 4 pi R squared A sub R so that the electric flux density then is equal to epsilon sub 0 times the electric field. So the reason for writing the constant in Coulomb's law is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0 is so that the f four, a 4 pi does not appear in this relationship between the electric field intensity and the electric flux density.